Hey guys, welcome to shop. How do you like my cheap trick guitarist starter kit look, right? A lot of things you're going to learn here, including how to be a snappy dresser. Okay, how'd you like that clickbait title? Um, you've seen this guitar before in an episode called fretboard diving board i'm going to give it to you right up there right about now we went through a few problems that you could find when you're considering buying one of these guitars or doing some work on one right in this area and in this area where the neck might have had some work done and you can spot it by the space under the fingerboard so again that link is up there there's also Enough time has passed since I used that iCard to stall around and give you another one. The most important one is Beginner's Guide to Junk Arch Top. So if you're going to go out and buy one, a lot on that video. It's a long one, but it's worth your while so you don't make uh, purchase and mistakes and hate yourself when you got a house full of guitars you can't get rid of. Anyway, Buyer's Guide to Junk Arch Tops right up there right about now. So, we're going to throw this one on the bench. I'm going to quickly discuss what we talked about in the last video. Got this from an artist. He wanted me to do some work on it, get it back to him. So, I'm going to do that now. Do a couple of fixes. Put a um, pit guard on it and ship it back to where it come from. So, let's hit the bench. All right, guys. We got the airline on the bench. Uh, before I forget, a little housekeeping. The matchbook of the episode is reliable prescriptions reliable prescription god i hope so uh this one's out of fresno california we'll talk a little bit about reliable prescriptions here in a little bit and then we'll go right to barrel house word of the episode this one's right up this alley too it's by degree is the saying, by degree. We heard Robert Johnson sing this in Preaching Blues in 1936. Hey, you know what? I think I'm going to give you a card to that movie right up there right about now. But the blues is an aching old heart disease like consumption killing me by degree. And it means little by little by steps usually pluralize what wound did ever heal but by degree. That means that something has happened little by little by little. It just don't happen all at once. And there's a couple things on here that we're going to see. This guitar would have been killed by degree. Okay, guys, back to the matchbook of the episode. Reliable prescriptions. What would you do if you found out that your pharmacist couldn't read what the doctor wrote, was just giving you anything? Um, and it didn't help you so imagine that or that it made your condition worse So in my line of business what I do for a living Sometimes I have to write reports about groups of things or whatever and you always want to understand the assignment Make sure both parties understand what it is you're supposed to do Now my assignment on this one has got somebody that can play this play it. Well uh, this guitar was uh, a gifted to them and they wanted to pick guard on it. We wanted to talk a little bit about why there was a gap under here and just kind of give it a once over. And so you always need to make sure that if you're going to work on somebody's guitar that number one you know what to do and uh, it's really clear and communicated what that is so nobody gets disappointed in the end. There's not under misunderstandings if you know what I mean. The more expensive guitars get the more expensive those misunderstandings become now. I want to show you something. This isn't my first airline. I have one. You've seen this one before. I think you've seen Bob Log play it. So when I'm talking about what's going on under the neck, I know what's supposed to be under that fingerboard because there's a stock one that I know uh, to be. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to be is what I'm trying to say here. No use trying to make it any more words than I have to. I'm putting this away so it don't fall over. But certainly didn't look like that with that big air gap underneath there. So, the reason I called this episode autopsy is because the more I looked at this, the more I started seeing things like, let's get some light on the subject here and get the pointer out. As I pointed out in the last movie about this, there's a 12th fret, but look, see that circle right there? 
looks like there's a fret missing there. I don't know of a guitar that has a 13th fret. And then there's 14, 15, and there's another circle right there. You see that? I hope you can see that. Let me tilt the camera for you. Get some of the scrap apparatus out of the way. But, yeah, there's circles right there and right there. Those aren't supposed to be there. So we had to do a little forensic work, like, what's going on? So then I started looking under the bridge or the fingerboard. And I'm going to really try to move in on this one. But if you look under there, catch a glimmer of some metal. You can see right there, there is something round in there that looks like a screw or a bolt or something. So when I was figuring out how to make something that would fit in here, which basically involved taping some fine sandpaper on here and take it and using that trick I showed you by using a pencil and a washer and rolling around on here to get what the shape of this concave is. I started digging around in there and I was trying to put the shim I made in there. Like so, it kept hitting something right there. I discovered that, guess what? Somebody had popped the top of the fingerboard off by drilling a couple plug holes in it with a plug cutter like we used to put our relic wood in and then pulled those out and then screwed the neck down onto the top of the body to stabilize it with two screws. So that's what happened there. So it come time to put in the shim and guess what? It wouldn't get by that screw. So I had to dish out the shim so I could put it at an angle like this and then I can slide it in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some hide glue, run under hot water to be warmed up. The guitar is room temperature and stabilized. This is what hide glue looks like. Remember it is heat activated so once this dries if somebody ever needs to take this off I, all they got to do is heat this up a little bit and the bond will break loose. Now notice that I said top on this side and that's the concave side. The bottom of the fingerboard is relatively flat so I'm going to put hide glue on this side of it, scoot it under there, line it up and you'll notice that there is chick flick teal on the sides so you'll know who did this repair and I certainly didn't run screws through the fingerboard. So um, that was the first big challenge. Now this isn't a big deal, but it could be. Oh, I love this little flex light screwdriver or, or light because you can put it in the body. And, but remember I showed you um, that somebody cut off a piece of fingerboard and stuck it under there when they left that gap there like that, see? And it's tucked just in under the edge of the fingerboard, same way over here. So I started looking at this. I'm gonna zoom in on this because we need to listen and, and learn here don't want the camera to get fuzzy but i kind of tracked out where the edge of that uh single piece of wood is right there so we'll run this in kind of give you an idea yeah it's st sitting about that far in from the edge of the fingerboard on both sides so i'm kind of feeling this along the way here and um what do you know I don't know if you can see that right there, but um, let's take a little piece of wood and listen here. Listen what you hear besides that airplane and every person in the world trying to make noise now. But I hear a little click right there when I run, but not over here. Well, guess what? There's a little crack forming right there. And guess where it's in line with? It's running right at the edge of imagine that in that fart. So what do you think's happening here? Well, my autopsy skills tell me that this person that plays his guitar is known to snap it like that, like Sun House. Or, and um, that's the big string. That's where all the pressure is. And this is lighter string. So is this a big deal? Nah. All right, if you remember the episode I did about fixing cracks in guitar bodies, I'm going to give you a link right up there, right about now. Um, it's pretty easy. We just need 
a damp cloth, some hide glue at the right temperature, a little bit of tape. We're going to mask off our area like so. That's pretty simple. Put that there like this. It's very small area. It's affected by the crack. We just push that down a little bit. I'm going to dampen the area just a tad, like so. Then I'm going to take, I love these glue bots because you just squeeze them and the glue comes up and then returns itself back down. Gives you very little manageable. See, that's all you need right there. And then I'm just going to go in there and dab that on there like that. Do that a couple times. Now, the trick to it was this. Remember I told you get the suction cups. You can hang bird houses on the window or whatever you want to do. You take a little moisture. Get the thing a little bit wet. Grandma spit game on the hair in church. And remember I've told you, don't pump. You're trying to pump the glue down in the crack. Well, you don't pump it down and then pick it up right away because the same suction that pushed it in will pull it back out if it sets in. So you just take this thing, start back ways from the crack, and go in like this. Just keep going over it and pushing down with the air out of it. And it'll pump that glue right down in that crack and we don't have to worry about it at that. So, is that a big deal? It would have been a big deal had this not been fixed and somebody pops this or tighten the strings up and all that weight on that little piece of wood right there with all this missing would have focused everything right there. Pop, you got to run and crack. Pop, you got to run and crack. Or worse yet, it splits out this concave right here. All right, while we're right here, we're going to take some of this tape, like so. I want to make sure that in case I didn't mention, once you get all the glue on there you want, you just dab it a little bit and make sure there's nothing sticking up so you don't have to do a bunch of sanding later. You don't want a big bunch of glue globs hanging off there. I've seen guitars like that. Anyway, we're going to go to both sides here and we're going to tape off this edge that we're going to be working on. I don't need to press this down really hard. I really don't want to leave it sit on here overnight in a hot shed or something like that because this stuff is low tack but it will ruin the ruin the finish on your guitar if it's left too long now again i took a washer and a pencil and figured out the concave drew a pattern and cut this down i've told you there's a bolt sticking up right there so when i was trying to put this in it would hang up so i built this so it will slide under there. I'm only going to glue the top of it. I'm not going to glue the bottom and glue that to the guitar. I don't think it was ever intended to do that. Um, but the main thing here is we're going to help this board right here uh, by taking away some of the stress. So we're going to take our glue bot here. This is not rocket science. And we're just going to, this stuff, I love this thing because it will put the glue on just like where you want it and then it runs back down in the container and then we're just going to spread the glue out evenly like this and uh, yeah I've got plenty of Bob Ross products to let me know that I'm doing a great job including the joy of bathing I'm not sure about that Bob where that come into the story I, you know what I don't want to know anyway good thing about hide glue is it's not like super glue. You got a little time to work, especially if it's warm out. If this stuff is starting to stiffen up too quick, it might be a little chilly in your shop. But anyway, I've got that like so. I'm going to slip that in there. There we get around there. And then I'm going to push it in. It's a little snug, but once it's in there, we're going to make sure it lines up on both sides by using our little scrap apparatus and then we'll let it set it'll be done all right there we go looking good certainly better than that big air gap that was there you also remember uh when you're trying to follow a concave or something you can't get your pencil into you can just put a piece of paper there and you put the pencil on the washer and run down and that pencil tip will follow the washer as it follows the concave and it will draw 
the pattern onto your paper or the piece of wood that you're going to use and then you just take that to the belt sander and make that work but anyway I feel a lot better about this sending out with some more support under there I'm um, we'll let that dry and everything will be fine okay then finally I think the easiest part about this was making a pig guard now I have um, different old pig guards that I can use for a pattern I have other guitars I can make a pattern uh, we did that episode about uh, making a pig guard and using this fancy chick flick teal tool that we made to measure in and cut the radius on some of this custom stuff but just basically took the pig guard material and cut it out like there um, and I want you to notice that here is a, uh, a pig guard from an old silver tone and if you tighten the uh, bolt down a little too tight it'll start wallering that out so what I found that we can use is we can use these little neoprene washers between the um, the bolt that's going to go there down into the hole and then we always always have a ton of this cork paper around it makes good shelving paper too it doesn't mold and everything it's come off of a tree so it's got to be good but I can take and it's got sticky tape on the back of it. I can take my um, bacon flavored toothpick and poke a hole in this like so and not poke my finger out. But anyway, poke a hole in there and stick this to the bottom of the pit guard where the hole is there like so. And uh, once I try to do this on film, it never works because I always take too long. But yeah, you just put it there like that and stick it on there everywhere a hole goes. And then that way, you're not going to be tearing up the top of the guitar if somebody ever wants to take that off or something. This paper has protected that just like so. Now all we got to do is set that on there and we take our signature chick flick teal screw and pop that on there and we're about done all right guys there we go um everything looks good that feels good pit guard turned out good i think everybody's going to be happy i'm gonna put a new set of strings on it'll be good to go guys always remember that the best experience you have is your own and little things like this to watch out for. Don't be afraid to write all that stuff down in a little book. I mean, people would die to know what's in here, wouldn't they? So write your ideas down and that way you can refer back to them if you ever run across something again or take a few pictures, print them out, paste them in that book and uh, you'll know what to do next time. So that's it right there. All right, guys, that was some pretty easy money on this old airline made for Montgomery Wards by most likely the K Company. A ton of these went out as Christmas presents. There's a model number in here, but this is about the fourth one that I've encountered of different arch tops like this that have some what looks like white shoe polish over it. So I think they took some leftover body pressings and put them together and put them out in a year. Anyway, we're done with this thing. That, that space under the fingerboard is done. We got the fretboard on it. And most importantly, I think the biggest thing that we found on this thing was this little crack that was starting right here at the edge of where that wood had been put in there to support this. Now, there wasn't one over here. We used, by the way, we used the original holes that we mounted, um, or the original holes to mount the uh, pit guard and I think I did an episode yeah how to make a pit guard right up there right about now and um, it'll tell you how to even mount electronics to one with spacers and brackets you can build anyway the big deal here on this guitar in my opinion was this little crack you could feel right there because on the heavy string side the person that plays this likes to snap the string like Sun House used to do in the 30s. Anyway, I'm happy with this. Um, give me your comments below. Give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. I like to hear what you guys are thinking about the path I'm going down with these 
old arch tops. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.